What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and a long off season is ahead. A very long off season as the Dallas Cowboys, as we all know, lost last Sunday against the San Francisco 49ers in the wild card round, ending their season. We have a lot to get to, obviously, over the coming months. We'll talk about free agency and the draft and all the prospects and everything in between, what the Cowboys are going to do, how they're going to be better. On and on and on, you know the drill. But the first thing that's kind of up, the next sort of thing that is somewhat important for the Cowboys, if you put any stock into this, is awards. And that is NFL awards. We'll, of course, have some awards that we'll hand out here at Blog of the Boys. Spoiler alert, get ready. I might wear a suit and tie. But NFL honors is uh, coming up in a few weeks, and we will find out whether or not the Cowboys have some people taking home some hardware that isn't the Vince Lombardi trophy, but still something to be proud of. Now, all of these things will be handed out at NFL honors that will take place on Thursday, February 10th. We will find out that night, for example, if DeMarcus Ware is, in fact, going to be a part of this year's Pro Football Hall of Fame class. He should be. But we will also find out who is going to be this season's NFL Comeback Player of the Year. And that is what we are here today to kind of discuss, kind of assess and analyze, because obviously Dak Prescott has been in the conversation ever since he hurt his ankle in week five of last year. It has always made sense that he was going to be in the running for this season's Comeback Player of the Year. But there are a couple of other players and one more notable player that are also in the mix that may or may not take the award from Dak. Now, we have to figure out who is going to be Comeback Player of the Year this season in the NFL. The three main contenders, obviously, you have Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. You have Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow, who we are going to discuss. And then you have San Francisco 49ers defensive star Nick Bosa. I don't think Nick Bosa is going to win it. And I want to say that a lot of the premise, a lot of my premise that we're about to discuss is based on the narrative, based on the way these things tend to go. You can make an argument all you want. I know we have some 49ers fans who have found our channel. Uh, by the way, please do subscribe here to the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel. And I'm not arguing against Nick Bosa. We're predicting how we think this is going to go because, again, the narrative is important. You know, when Dak Prescott was playing at an elite level early on in the early days of the season, I said then, you can go back and look, that I did not think he was going to win comeback player of the year if he won MVP. And that's because generally you don't see multiple players win awards. I also said I never thought that Micah Parsons was actually going to win defensive player of the year because he was very obviously going to win defensive rookie of the year. I think if Micah had had an overwhelming case, he obviously would have had to have won it. But the NFL doesn't like to do that. Think, for example, how there is always a quarterback who wins MVP, yet there is a different offensive player who wins offensive player of the year. Think about five years ago in 2016, Dak Prescott won Offensive Rookie of the Year, yet Ezekiel Elliott won Offensive Player of the Year, despite the fact that Zeke was a rookie and Dak was an offensive player. So this thing can be kind of weird sometimes, which is maybe why you don't put a lot of stock into it, but it is something that is going to happen, which is why we are here today to kind of look at the cases of the quarterbacks, because this generally goes to a quarterback unless you have some extraordinary circumstances, which is why Prescott and Burrow are kind of the headlining options for all voters to choose from. So let's take a look at Dak Prescott and Joe Burrow and their seasons. And from a statistical you know, perspective, they are very similar. Obviously, Joe Burrow this season, 366 of 520. Dak Prescott, 410 of 596, airing the ball out a little bit more. Joe Burrow, 4,600 yards, a little bit more than Dak Prescott's, just, you know, 4,400 and a half, we'll call it. Joe Burrow threw 34 touchdowns this season. Dak Prescott threw 37. Joe Burrow did throw more interceptions than Dak Prescott, 14 to 10, and did finish the season with a slightly higher rating of 108.3 to Dak Prescott's 104.2. Now, I want to take this off for a second because I want to say something important. These things are voted on at the end of the regular season. And again, we're trying to predict how we think the votes are going to go here. You may feel passionately about Dak. You may feel passionately about Joe Burrow. We're looking at how the voters are going to go here based on kind of historical precedent. So these things are voted on at the end of the regular season. So what has just happened is very fresh in people's minds. Now, Dak Prescott did have the dominating performance against Washington, did have the dominating performance against Philadelphia on the road. Although I think all voters will acknowledge that that was against kind of a JV team from the Eagles. But he did break Tony Romo's record for most passing touchdowns in a season by a Cowboys quarterback. And of course, you could, you know, you could go a number of different ways. You could say Dak Prescott is coming back from a more egregious injury. I'm not a doctor. I can't vouch for that. But Dak coming back from the ankle injury Joe Burrow coming back from the torn ACL MCL in his left knee you've got you know you've got legitimate cases on both sides here you've got teams that both won their respective divisions and if you look at the end of the regular season while Dak Prescott had some notable games Joe Burrow was like 
Super Saiyan at the end of the regular season. In week 16 and 17, the Bengals did rest their starters in week 18. Joe Burrow was insane. He might have won you your fantasy league. Maybe it wasn't him. Maybe it was Jamar Chase. Maybe he had another piece of the Bengals offense, Tyler Boyd, uh, you know, Uzoma, whatever the case may be. Maybe it was even T. Higgins. But Joe Burrow in these two games, weeks 16 and 17, where the Bengals won the division, 67 of 85, almost a thousand yards in those two games alone. This is just two games for Joe Burrow, 971 yards, eight touchdowns, no interceptions, and a quarterback rating on average between the two games of 145.6. It was pointed out by a lot of broadcasts that this was an insane two-game stretch. In fact, it was the second highest two-game stretch from a passing yardage standpoint that any quarterback has ever had. The first, of course, was Dak Prescott in the early days of 2020 when the Cowboys defense was terrible and Dak Prescott was having to throw it a thousand times. So you've got Joe Burrow, who literally had this historic two-game run right before the voters sit down to cast their ballots and figure out who they think is going to win this thing. And so that's, you know, I could see voters being caught up in the moment and thinking Joe Burrow deserves to win it. The Bengals won the division. Here he comes. This is the number one overall pick. Everything's finally starting to come together. Does he have the star power that Dak Prescott does? Obviously not. And that's not to say that Joe Burrow is not a star in his own right, but Dak Prescott is Dak Prescott and is the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And so I could very easily see people being swayed by this. I could very easily see people, you know, still sticking to their guns with Dak Prescott. Obviously, Dak had a great run at the very end against Washington and Philadelphia specifically, but Dak also lost to the Cardinals and Dak also had a really poor second half of the season. Not that Joe Burrow was amazing over the second half of the season. Again, he did have that two-game stretch, but I could see people leaning towards the Bengals narrative because it was a bit of a surprise. People like to kind of get caught up in the emotions of this team coming from nowhere, this team ending their drought, this team winning a playoff game. Again, these are voted on at the end of the regular season, but there is some playoff narrative that goes into it. And I think that when you look at how these quarterbacks played in the wild card round, obviously the Bengals won and the Cowboys didn't. It was a pretty kind of even Steven performance, ultimately, except for the interception that Dak Prescott threw. Uh, Joe Burrow, 24 of 34 against the Las Vegas Raiders. Dak Prescott, 23 of 43 against the San Francisco 49ers. 244 yards for Burrow, where there were 254 for Prescott. Two touchdowns for Joe, although one of them came with the whistle right before Tyler Boyd caught it. Um, that was a whole ridiculous uh, situation. But Dak Prescott did have the one touchdown and the one interception. Obviously ran one in. Um, you know, it was a, a crazy game for the Cowboys at the end of that one against the 49ers. No interceptions for Joe Burrow, though, you know, whatever. And a 110.4 rating for Joe. Meanwhile, a 69.3 rating for Dak Prescott. So I could see this going either way. And that's kind of the, the weird thing to me. I would not be stunned if Dak Prescott still wins this thing because he has a you know, huge case. He came back from a devastating ankle injury. You can also, if you're factoring a narrative, factor in the, the contract, factor in, you know, how the Cowboys defense was nothing. Granted, the Cowboys defense didn't play very well, but Dak Prescott has kind of been the story of this Cowboys team for a long time now. But Joe Burrow, you know, number one overall pick two years ago. He's a very popular name playing very well down the stretch and took a team that nobody really believed in, not just to the playoffs, but to winning uh, a division title. And again, winning a playoff game that doesn't factor into this voting. But the fact that this is even close is really kind of a stun to me. You know, at the beginning of the season, you know, talking to people and stuff, you know, different podcasts and shows that I do, at least, there were people who said, well, watch out, Joe Burrow, Nick Bosa could win comeback player of the year. And I thought that was ridiculous. I thought there's no way on earth that this is not a slam dunk proposition for Dak Prescott. Like I said, he might still win it, but this competition that he's got going on, however much you care about this award, we want to see any Cowboy win any award that's possible. Obviously, we want to see them win playoff games in the Super Bowl more than anything. But the fact that this is a closer competition than any of us anticipated, that's a little bit, you know, that tells you the story of, of what happened here. This should have been a slam dunk proposition at the beginning of the season, the first half of the season. It seemed like there is no way, no how that anyone but Dak Prescott is going to win this unless he won MVP. And like I said, I said, if Dak was going to win MVP, then this was very easily going to be a situation where Joe Burrow wins comeback player of the year. But, you know, that didn't happen. And so. Now we're here. Now we're asking the question, is it going to be Dak Prescott? Is it going to be Joe Burrow? Who is going to win comeback player of the year when NFL honors happens on Thursday, February 10th? Who do you think? Let us know in the comments below. You can always hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I am at RJ Ochoa on both. My DMs are open if you'd rather go that route. Of course, if you'd rather email, you can 
rj.ochoa at sbnation.com. The season is over, but we roll on here on the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel, so make sure you please do subscribe. we got stuff coming out every week. we got some fun things we're working on, some plans where we've got in the workshop and whatnot. Uh, we're going to get through this together. So thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time.